This could, could all go horribly wrong at any minute. And the rubber chicken says... <laughs> oh, 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 and a congresswoman claims she's being tracked by gazpacho police. I think it's time to remove her from office. Well, what do I know? I'm just a rubber chicken and a brilliant one at that. Well put. And I'm glad that I could give you a bit of a raise so that you wouldn't go on strike this week. But I'll get back to you. But I've got to get on with Rantcast 70. And this one is entitled Legitimate Political Discourse. <laughs> really? Cue the laughter. Unbelievable. Seriously. I got a Marjorie Taylor Greene claims that uh, that, um, that Nancy Pelosi has a group called uh, the Gazpacho Police, of course, as we all know, because we now have all been thrown at this a hundred times that she meant They say that she meant uh, Gestapo, but if she doesn't. I, I, I think that's bullshit. I don't think we know that, do we? I, uh-uh. That, I, I believe she believes it was Gazpacho Police. That's what I believe. And I'm going to stick to it, because she has shown nothing that would make me think that, oh, she would know what the Gestapo were, okay? Because she just b- blathers whatever the hell she wants to blather. Good God. Yeah, they're tracking her, right? They, like, they need to track her. She comes out there and just does it on her own. There's no need to track her, okay? She's already in her own fashion without really doing it. Just metaphorically, uh, she's wearing um, aluminum foil on her head, so to speak. Gazpacho police. Somebody wrote in and I tried to find it. Um, and, and, and please feel free to point it out, but wrote a, a nice thing that g- g- Gazpacho may be the Gestapo of soups. I like that one. And it came in through one of the rants and I tried to track it down this morning and I couldn't. So uh, uh, if you get that to me, I will uh, next week I will get it back and give you the credit you deserve. That was just terrific. And if you stole it from somebody, give them the credit they deserve, and we'll have a whole list. We'll have a acknowledgement section that we'll do next week, but thank you for that. Also, a legitimate political discourse, I'm not even, that's like a punchline in the middle of a punch. What, what I, the Republican National Committee, uh, which I guess is meeting in a bunker somewhere, and, um, uh, also, uh, all wearing aluminum foil, uh, decided that, uh, what took place on January 6th was legitimate political discourse. It's an interesting way to put something uh, like that. I mean, it's, come on. You can't keep making shit up. It's not legitimate political discourse, all right? It's on film. We've all seen the film. Everybody, if that's legitimate political discourse, then we are fucked, okay? Then you're going to yell about Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger. Come on. And then you're, okay enough of this. I didn't want to talk about legitimate political discourse, because we don't even have legitimate political discourse anymore. We have Hong Kong, quack, quack, Hong Kong, quack, quack. Um, the, the good God, I just, the, 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 the madness is beyond belief. I, I can't even begin to, but it was a good run this week, and uh, some great rants came in, you're going to get to see, listen to, uh, uh, from, uh, from Des Moines we started in, Des Moines, Iowa, which is uh, Boomtown, USA. A lot of stuff happening there. I don't know exactly what it is. Uh, and uh, we're, we're trying to check on that. I, I probably won't uh, do much heavy checking. No one has really t- written to me. Maybe they'll Twitter me about it. I don't know. But uh, there's that. And then we were last night in Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, also, state capitals, here's what's happening, and I know what it was, and this is the thought I'm going to get to. The reason it's booming is because they're state capitals. Much like when Ronald Reagan took the presidency in Washington, there was a huge influx, and it would have happened under, and it's, I'm not just saying it's Ronald Reagan, it would have happened eventually when the idiots figured out, oh, we're going to send in lobbyists. <laughs> and they're gonna, we're going to kind of create a whole thing around uh, the capital and create a business, and that business will be the business of trying to get business from Washington. That's what's occurring in Des Moines. That's what's occurring in Madison. It's the business of the business of government. I mean, which in some ways is good and in some ways is horrific, okay? And uh, we, we, it's, it's, but that really is, and so when people yell and scream, well, the, fuck the government, fuck the government. Government also creates all of this business. 
Some of the business is good, some of the business is shitty. But all those buildings got built because of the shitty business. So a bunch of construction workers got work in, in Des Moines, and I think and they got work in Madison. And now we're on our way to Minneapolis, which is where? To a casino, which is just great for everybody because everybody knows that there's nothing better than gambling to, to help a culture grow and grow and become bigger and better. Okay, and, uh, and I can't wait to see uh, just what the numbers are when uh, they finally figure out what sports betting does to undermine this country of ours. I can fucking unbelievable that the, 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 how, a prof how it's even allowed that the NFL can partner with a, a, a gambling outfit and it's not criminal on any level, huh? Like, do I have to go to fucking law school? What, how is that even possible? that they can do that and then call themselves clean. Jesus, it's ridiculous. You don't get to make money off of that shit, are you fucking assholes? And then, and then what will they do with the money, huh? I can imagine, yeah, right. They'll give it back to the community. <laughs> you can count on that. Um, big news, uh, is that, of course, for myself, is that uh, the Washington football team, which should have remained the Washington football team, which was a great name for the Washington football team, uh, because it, it gave the sense of a club, and it had a kind of a history to it, and it kind of gave a sense of a, a community thing, so that it was, if it was, if the team was shitty, you think, well, it's just a club, just a bunch of guys playing ball. They're not going to be as good as the ones who have real nicknames, because it's just a bunch of guys who show up, whoever shows up that, that Sunday, and uh, that would have been it, but instead, no. And I, they, they had a group of people, and I don't know who this group is and why they didn't allow uh, more folks in, in D.C. I, or in the, in, the, in the surrounding area to help with this. Uh, they came up with this uh, new nickname, the Commodores, the Washington Commodores. I mean, who, I, you can't even, I can't even get it out of my God. Go Commodores? Seriously? What? I'm in high school? Go, 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 you Commodores, you Commodorians. It doesn't even fit with the, the, the hail to the Commodores. Like, seriously. Yeah, call them the, I, I felt call them the Commodes. That would have been better, with a big flushing toilet on the side. And that way, if we sucked, you go, well, what are you going to do? We're called, we're called the place that you're going to take a shit. Okay? But the Commodores, you, you basically take it from... The Washington Redskins, and, and I got tons of tons of things on a on a, uh, on a on a one of the rants that was sent out, of tons of response that it came. It was this was not uh, this was created by uh, the Native Americans themselves. It's an honor. It's this. It's that. Uh, I don't know who was sending these in. I don't know if they're bots. I don't even know if it's true. Uh, and I got and I'm not doing the research. I don't care. It's it, it's not it's a, it's 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 a, uh, it, it, I, it's a it's not a word you should be using as a thing. Okay, is that what I said? Is that what I've been saying? Or I said commanders, right? Yeah. But the Commodores is true. That would have even been better. The Commodores, yeah. right? With uh, what's his name, uh, Lionel Richie, originally came from the Commodores. As a matter of fact, the six of them could have started. Uh, the way we, uh, with uh, the, the league, the way we were playing last year. Lionel Richie could have started, or at least just sang on the sidelines while the team was getting, uh, losing. But, uh, no, they, to, but to get to the point, um, so uh, it's a subjugated people. And that was the part of the problem, talking about uh, that is our nickname. And then you pick, is the other name, uh, uh, Commander. So you've picked the subjugator. What, the, what fuck did you, do you have no goddamn, not thoughtful, not creative, not imaginative, not on any level whatsoever, none. The, out, outside the box, there is no box. That's a box within a box within a box within a box within a box. That's, that's like one of those fucking eggs from Russia. And you get to the last one and there's just a, a little tiny goddamn uh, a, a jumping bean that doesn't work anymore, okay? It's in the wrong place. Commander, fuck you, son of a bitch. And then the logo is uh, insipid. And I'm not sure about the uniforms yet. I don't care, okay? I mean, but if the uniforms had spikes on them, that might help. 
So that really was, and then I found out that John Riggins, one of my heroes uh, from one of those great Washington teams, also doesn't like it. So I rest my case, okay? Okay, because if you do like it, I'm going to call him up and have him come to your house and beat you up. So, so what do you think of that? <laughs> and that's where we are. That's where we are today. So we're rolling now uh, to our next stop in Minneapolis, coming out of Madison. And it is just delightful as the temperature is plummeting. Uh, we hope to get there in time uh, to have our, all of us will take one deep breath and our sinuses will be sealed off and frozen. And uh, I may not be able to do a show. Uh, as I, uh, but it's, that's what happens. You're not supposed to breathe in after a, when it's very, very cold out because your sinuses can actually freeze. And then they have to take a hammer, hit them just slightly, break your nose, and then the ice falls out and then they do surgery. So I may, I may not be back next week. I'm hoping, uh, but I will be. We'll be in Reno, and then we'll be in Monterey, and then we're going to be in Napa. Nope, lie. Reno, Monterey, Turlock. Turlock. Yeah, I forgot Turlock. I forgot it because I'd never been there. I didn't even know it existed, but we're going to be there. And uh, uh, I know we're going to be there because I'm going to be doing some radio for Turlock, so you're going to want to listen in from all over the country, especially those of you who still have a shortwave radio. It'll be something you want to pick up. It's going to be a great interview as I get up to Turlock. And that's about it from here. Uh, the, the rants that came in were spectacular. One, two, just a couple of things I'll say. Uh, they're getting longer and longer and longer. I understand that. My emails are profoundly long, uh, as if uh, we haven't communicated in so long that you just want to be sure you get all of it in. Um, what it, and I and I really appreciate it. It's not that they're 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 truly well written, which makes it tough. Um, but it, if you can tighten them up a bit, and uh, as Archie Bell and the Drell said, tighten up, uh, we'll be able to uh, we we'll be able to to read more and get more read. And I think uh, that would really help. I, it just it, it, take a quick look after you do it. You know. Um, and, and, and take a quick edit, and, uh, and, and, and I really am, uh, <clears throat> and I hate to say this, but it's just that we, we don't have the time at the end of the show to get, get to all the ones that I'd like to get to. So uh, if you could do that, that would help, they, because they, you know, and I hate to be the one to edit you. And uh, I'm gonna end this, this is from a Canadian, uh, Spencer Seymour, and uh, I think it's, it's an important, uh, well, not so much a rant, but a reporting uh, from the way he sees it. He may be wrong. I don't know. We don't know anything, it, you know, anymore. You know, but it's, I, I kind of have a certain trust and faith in those who. You, you, first, you got to find <laughs> my, where to send in these things. Then you got you got to type them out and then send it in, uh, so that I think that there's a certain amount of legitimacy to what uh, is being said, um, and. Uh, this is a report on what's happening up in Canada, uh, uh, and I, it's an interesting take on it, and one that we, we only hear bits and pieces of. Uh, Hi, Lou. I'm a Canadian fan of yours who's ran it before and thought I'd do so again. You may have seen or heard about the Freedom Convoy in Ottawa, Ontario, and subsequently at the Canadian-American border in Windsor, Ontario, as well as much smaller events in communities across Canada. This obviously isn't what Canada is known for. Canada is known for being a generally inoffensive, nondescript country. We don't take things too seriously. Our sense of humor is a hybrid of British and American tastes. And we're basically just happy to be anywhere. If we were a color, we'd be beige. And let me just say how deeply proud I am of our typical image. However, what has been happening in Ottawa, Windsor, and in various places across Canada is nothing to be proud of. In fact, it's one of the darkest moments in our history. But as Fox News seems to be a major supporter, and who knows, maybe a financial backer and organizer of this bullshit, I thought I'd submit this in hopes you could provide the real story about what's happening right now. Firstly, the majority of the country doesn't agree with these assholes. I've read that and seen that and heard that. So. Hell, the majority of truckers don't agree with these dickheads. I've read that and seen that and heard it. 
How do I know that? Because while these rat fuckers are stealing the freedom of regular people in Ottawa, Windsor, etc., the majority of truck drivers are driving fucking trucks. What does that mean? That means that the majority of truck drivers are vaccinated. And like everyone who isn't a fucking sociopath, hates wearing masks, but realizes they're necessary. Why do they understand this? Because the majority of truck drivers, like the majority of the general population, aren't selfish fuck prick faces. Well, well put. Now, while it's true that the vast majority of Canadians are disgusted by what has happened, and the people doing this are a minority, you should know what these people have done. Someone danced while another urinated on the tomb of the unknown soldier, the most sacred war monument in Canada. A group of these cocksuckers defaced a monument of Terry Fox. Even I know who Terry Fox is. The biggest hero in Canadian history who ran on one leg across the country for cancer research. These fuckheads placed an anti-science bile on a statue immortalizing a man who devoted his life to advancing science. Some of them assaulted a homeless man and harassed the staff of a homeless shelter until they gave them some food. That's right. They stole food from a homeless shelter. And of course, they've been honking their stupid fucking horns for three weeks straight, as if honking a horn is what gets governments to make decisions. This protest was, has accomplished nothing except revealing the Conservative Party and candidate as a bunch of taint-licking fucks who stick their finger in the wind to see which way it's blowing right after they take it out of each other's asses. Perhaps most horrifically, these people who claim to be freedom-loving patriots have revealed they have no clue what freedom is because for three weeks, businesses have lost revenue. Laws have been broken. Monuments and statues to our greatest national heroes have literally been shit and pissed on. And regular people have been unable to live, live their lives with any semblance of freedom. Like a disabled resident who's been unable to leave their house to get groceries because these uterus stains have made it impossible for them to get out of their house and go to the store. This person starved in their house for days until a reporter learned of the story, reported, and the Ottawa residents, with way more balls than the Ottawa police, went to the store for the person, got them groceries, and forced their way through the group of twat brains. Oh, and for the record, the reason I shit on the Ottawa police is because for three weeks, they haven't done jack shit. They've done what you so eloquently said George Bush did following Hurricane Katrina. And watch this mob ruin the lives of good people in Ottawa as, it, as, it, as if it was a made-for-TV movie. Holy fuck, I didn't know it was on tonight. Where did they get all those extras and those special effects are spectacular? Actually, they've done worse. In some cases, they've posed for pictures with or actively helped the ball-choking bitches with their crimes against civility. I hope this has been funny at some point. <laughs> and not just some raving lunatic losing their shit with no moments of laughter. But please know that these, and here we go, cunt whiffers are the majority. They're not even a no notable minority. And they don't represent truckers. The vast majority of truckers are doing their jobs like the incredibly hardworking pros that they are. For all the faults of our elected leaders, for all their ineptitude, failed promises and errors, they've not taken away anyone's freedom. The only people that are restricting other people's freedom are these fucking misplaced ejaculations. Thanks, Lou. And, and thank you, Spencer. Spencer Seymour, thank you for that reporting from the front lines. And the commentary, and the in incredible use of, uh, if we could go through it, and just the, uh, you used every possible way to insult. Uh, uh, unbelievable, prick, down to misplaced ejaculations. You gotta love it. Thanks for uh, sharing that with us. And uh, there we are, heading to uh, a casino in, in Minneapolis. Maybe I'll get in a little gambling, I'm just not sure. I might need a nappy, 
Yeah, it was a long, long uh, rant there, and I might need a nappy. Um, please get your rants in, um, especially those of you who are in uh, Reno, Monterey, and Turlock. We'll be rolling your way soon, and uh, I'd love to hear from you. You're the generator behind this motor, this iPad motor. <laughs> what a piece of shit. But we're glad, I'm glad I got it. And I'm glad I have you and uh, behind me. It makes a big difference. Thanks again for sharing with me, and uh, see you next week. Today's show is sponsored by Microdose Gummies. By this point, you've probably heard about the rising trend in THC gummies, and you might have been curious as to what benefits you could get from them. Microdose gummies deliver perfect entry-level doses of THC that help you feel just the right amount of good. People have taken advantage of all kinds of the therapeutics that they offer, such as helping to reduce anxiety, recovering from a workout, alleviating joint pain, or just wanting to get a good night's sleep. They taste and feel amazing. You can use them to get into the zone for whatever you might need to do. Whether it's doing something creative or winding down from a long day, they are 10 out of 10. Microdose gummies are available nationwide and you can learn more about them and microdosing THC by visiting microdosegummies.com and use code LEWIS to get free shipping and 30% off your first order. Once again, that's microdosegummies.com, and use the code LEWIS. Thank you, guys. We're coming to you live from the Hoyt Sherman Theater in Des Moines, Iowa. And uh, if you've not uh, been to Des Moines right now, I would say uh, I've been coming here for years, and uh, I used to play a comedy club here, and now I'm lucky enough to be able to play this beautiful theater. And the one thing that uh, has happened here is uh, they... It's a boom town. I don't know what exactly they're up to. Um, <laughs> there are about 35,000 new office buildings that, uh, it, it, literally, uh, there were a bunch when I came here the last time, and now there are more, which meant that during a pandemic, they just kept building offices <laughs> in hopes that people would eventually go back to the office. And I hope, we talked about it early in the show, that it, it works out for them. Um, <laughs> But it is something, and uh, it's, it's always, it's great to be in Iowa. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a state that really is completely literate and completely stupid at the exact same time. <laughs> I, would, I would go on a little more about it, but there's a lot of stuff to be read, and I don't want to get right to it. Um, so this is from Angela Flom, or Flom, I'm not sure which, but she came home to find the rental neighbors next door naked in their front yard. <laughs> Waved as I pulled in and locked the door. That's good. That's, I wish you'd let us know which neighborhood. I... Right here. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so I'll just wait outside here after the show. Anne is here tonight. Um, it's uh, Zach Valentine's mom. I rarely do this, but you, since you're the mother, I'm, I'm, we'll say happy birthday to you. I, I don't really do that, but uh, happy birthday, Anne. Because uh, apparently this was your birthday present, and I think he fucking lowballed you. Okay? That's the reason I read that. To kind of up it a little, but... I think, uh, I think jewelry, something like that. Uh, maybe like a dishwasher, some new appliance that you could really use. <laughs> Fucking that would help. This, what does this do? <laughs> God damn it, Zach, you son of a bitch. <laughs> this is Bryce from Skankany. <laughs> that, that's good, I have no idea what that means. And that's why I like doing this, because there seems to be a hundred inside things going on. And... <laughs> Look, dear Lewis, get it through your thick head to stop coming to Iowa in the fucking winter. It's all gray and wet, and nobody wants to be alive. It wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't for the wind. Fuck you. It gets to be minus 30 without the wind, you prick. 
Des Moines was established by the French in 1845 to, to remind them why to never invade Russia again. <laughs> Since you're never around in the summer, let me tell you about the annual tradition in the great city of Des Moines, the farmer's market. I know what a farmer's market is. It's a market for farmers to sell their shit to us. Des Moines does not have a farmer's market. Des Moines has the equivalent of a high school passing period with tents. <laughs> Nobody knows where they're going or what the fuck is happening. Walk this way, you can buy a growler filled with root beer for 20 bucks cash only. Cash only! If you turn that way, you can hear a musician play only what I can describe as aggressive PVC pipes. <laughs> you gotta get to the market at an ungodly hour to even get a chance to park close. And even then, there's 876 people mulling around looking for spots to take pictures for their Instagram, Visco, Twitter, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> So you decide to grab some breakfast while you wait for the sun to come up. Nope, the line for the breakfast tent on either end of the market is already 20 people deep and nobody knows what they want until they get to the front. <laughs> you choke down your $10 vegan, humanely euthanized hummus breakfast burrito. It's time to, to, to see who's got the best shit. Remember, I told you, it's a farmer's market. And yet it seems that two thirds of the tent are for dream catchers, custom doggy bandanas and cornhole boards. I'm here to get produce, not invest in your dopey sign making business. Point me to the radishes and Brussels sprouts, you fuck. Speaking of doggy bandanas, why does every hipster douche have to walk their St. Bernard Chihuahua mix through the market? If you want your dogs to make a friend, fucking get him a Facebook. <laughs> get it off the street and away from me. Watch where you walk. There could be a nice streaming pile of, 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 in the middle of the walkway because some kumquat can't even with their dog's excrement. Get out of my way with your $200 Iowa Cubs custom fire pit, your $6 Dutch letters, and your herd of children, and let me get the produce I need so I can go home and drink my Templeton rye to forget all about the madness that is the Des Moines farmer's market. Thank you, Bryce from Skankany. <laughs> from Emily Ficus, Fiscus, I work in the front office of a middle school. All day the kids come in and ask me what period it is because they can't read the analog clocks on the wall. <laughs> Is this yet another failure of our educational system? Or is reading analog clocks going the way of cursive writing? Wow. Wow, that's, boy, I, I would lose my mind if I was teaching. I, I couldn't do it, I'd be psychotic. Republican, this is Susan Wilbois, or Wilbois. A Republican, well, uh, notice the way I moved away from the mic so I didn't say her name aloud so that I didn't fuck it up. Will Boys, I'm taking a guess, Susan. Republican-controlled Iowa government politicians are trying to pass a law to fine and jail teachers who introduce books that have not been banned, but, parent, but politicians feel should be. Uh, yeah. Read the book. Read the book. Uh, now you've got, for the folks at home, uh, that's uh, as loud as they kind of get about certain issues. <laughs> they agree on them. They really do. If I prodded them, they would go, yeah. But a lot of them are tuckered out. It's been a long evening. <laughs> they really aren't for banning books here. You, they're not. I don't think. And if you are, I'll be leaving, I'll be leaving tonight. <laughs> but I saw it. I saw him, I saw one of those fuckers talking about it today. It's unbelievable. I mean, I've said it before, but here's a good idea. You want your kids uh, to read those books? Ban them. Uh -huh. 
Christopher, Chris Walterbach, this is so perfect. Idiot Republicans in our state of Iowa wanted to put cameras in every classroom in the state, and the bill had no money to pay for the cameras. <laughs> I saw it a day that I will add, um, the, uh, the Democrats wanted a 5% raise for the teachers. The, um, uh, the Republicans wanted two and a quarter percent, um, which I think is, I think that's, that would make it less than whole milk. And then, <laughs> and then they're voting on two and a half percent. I mean, I, after all that people have gone through to having to teach and you, you can't get five, five percent shitty. I mean, I mean, come on. It's unbelievable to me. It's just fucking unbelievable. How somebody sit there, well, we're gonna give you two and a half percent. Well, how do you fucking say that? I don't get how you do it. I work in the front of office of a middle school. The parents complain to me all day about things I have no control over. One time a parent complained to me about the number of mini corn dogs her kid was served for lunch. <laughs> My boss told me I had to stop hanging up on people. So how do I get them to shut up without getting fired? You say, God, you, I don't think your cell phone is working. I'm losing you, I'm losing you, I'm losing you, that's all. Blame their cell phone. And you know, and, the, and the, the, your prick boss can't deal with it. And then, to, that's from Emily Fiscus, and then to end it, uh, Tandem Ice Guy, boy, you guys have some names tonight. Ice guide. It, I'm taking a guess there, but this is perfect. Is an ending to that run? Two teachers in the audience that are getting hammered on a school night. <laughs> I'm going to leave you this from Matthew Tuttle, who really nails it and is also, he's here at the show tonight. This is, this, it just nails something that I know we've all been through, and it's, it's a shared pain. We need to do something about the onslaught of surveys we are hit with on a daily basis. If you buy something, you'll get a survey from the seller, and even sometimes the delivery company wanting to know how they did. Go to a restaurant, there's directions to complete a survey. Drugstore, survey. Get on an app, another fucking survey. Not even I believe my opinion is that valuable. <laughs> Just today, while on Twitter, a survey popped up asking, enjoying Twitter? I'm on Twitter right now, of course I'm not enjoying it. <laughs> Have you been on Twitter lately? It's a fucking cesspool, and you should be ashamed. <laughs> I'd occasionally build out surveys for restaurants until I found out that, on a scale from one to five, if the server got anything below a five, it counted against them. Logically, on a scale to five, a three would be good service, four would be above average, and five would be exceptional. So if I received above average service, the service would be penalized, the server would be penalized for my honesty. I'm very happy with just good service. Should the server be penalized because they were too busy to refill my glass of water every three minutes? I've talked to food service workers and they think my scale is a little harsh. And a five shouldn't be, didn't spit in your food. <laughs> Since I have no way to confirm that, I'm not doing the survey. Sometimes when you think about it, you can't even accurately complete a survey, even if you wanted to. I go to Walgreens, and I'm asked to rate my experience. Oh, I know those fucks. I was, I was here this time to pick up a deodorant, which is a way better experience than when I came for aspirin, but not nearly the thrill I got when I stopped in for toothpaste. <laughs> How does one convey that in a survey? The company I work for does an annual survey on how we feel our management is doing. They form this out to a third party company to give us the illusion that our responses are anonymous. The name of the company is, and I shit you not, Survey Monkey. <laughs> so after I complete the survey, giving all the management positive reviews because anonymous my ass, I hit the fucking submit button and a survey pops up to review the survey I just took. <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? It's like the whole world is a zit-faced 14-year-old with low self-esteem who's in need of positive reinforcement. 
just how needy has the world become? Just because your service is sub-exceptional doesn't mean I won't come back for a burger in the future. I enjoyed our time together and look forward to seeing you again. You feel better? Good. Now leave me the fuck alone! <laughs> I swear to God, Lou, if I receive a survey asking to rate my experience at your show tonight out of spite, I will actually complete the survey and rate you to one. My experience was ruined by the comedian saying the word fuck too many times. <laughs> Thank you, Matthew. You know what's not fair? The fact that Netflix hides thousands of shows and movies from you based on your location and then has the nerve to increase their prices on you. That's right. They've just raised their prices once again. Now you could just cancel your subscription and protest, or you could be smart about it and make sure you're getting your full money's worth by using ExpressVPN. See, you might not know that what's on Netflix in your country is completely different from what someone in the UK or Japan has on theirs. When using ExpressVPN, I can control which country I want Netflix to think I'm in. ExpressVPN has over 90 countries to choose from, so every time I run out of stuff to watch, I just switch to another country to unlock new shows. And here's the best part. It's not just for one platform like Netflix. You can use ExpressVPN to unlock shows on other streaming services too. ExpressVPN is also super fast and works on your phone, laptop, even smart TVs, so you can watch your shows on the big screen with zero buffering. So stop paying full price for streaming services and only getting access to a fraction of their content. Get your money's worth at expressvpn.com slash black. Use my link and you will get three extra months free. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash black. ExpressVPN dot com slash black. We are here at the Orpheum Theater. We're in Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, I love coming back to Wisconsin. It is a, uh, it is a state where I, I learned that uh, I would never be able to, uh, to drink on the level. <laughs> that, I'm, I'm just not... I, I would practice every year when I would be coming back, much as, much as like a young ball player might work on their skills. Yes, yes, I will have uh, brandy old fashioned. Yes, I will drink 10 or 12 of these. Yes, I will be able to do this without vomiting. And, and then I'd come back and uh, it would just be said that people would just look at me, what a sad little man. Um, <laughs> Madison is the town. This is just outside of town. I, th I think the, the club is called Laugh Lines, I think, um, which is where I did my first album, which is called uh, The White Album. And, uh, and, uh, and, it's, uh, and if you've never been to Madison, it's, it's well worth a visit. Uh, it, I'm, I'm serious. It's, uh, there are th three or four of these great enclaves in the, in the country, and this is a, a great university town, and then you combine it with the, it's also the capital. And, uh, you know, want to avoid it during a football weekend, it can get. If, if they win, it's psychotic, and if they lose, it's psychotic. We're going to get going on this because we have a lot of stuff that came in. This is from Kevin Gastola. He's here tonight. Why do we get so angry at comedians? It's, you can see why I'm going to read this. <laughs> I think he, he said this well. As if they have the power to make decisions that affect our daily lives when they absolutely fucking don't. You can't go a day anymore without opening your social media to see a famous comic trending. But comics aren't politicians. They don't use their wealth to buy elections. They don't run corporations that fight everything good for the poor and needy. Is Dave Chappelle a fucking member of Congress who's more concerned about his stock trades than his constituents? Does Whoopi Goldberg fucking control some dark money organization which funds right-wing hate groups? 
John Stewart said he prefers to engage with people he disagrees with than take his ball and go home. And tons of people react like he fucking just said it was okay for Trumpers to riot on Capitol Hill. The COVID-19 pandemic isn't killing more than 2,000 a day because a meathead comic has a ma massively popular a podcast. We do not have a public health care system like other countries that have done far better than us in keeping their citizens alive. That is why we're in a winter of death. And that is how you get a U.S. president who suggests the most batshit cures for, the, uh, for curing COVID, like injecting bleach and using tanning beds. Do you realize how close we came to having a president suggest we shove cotton balls dipped in botanical oil up our assholes to beat COVID? Before popping off on a comedian the next time we see their name in a clickbait headline, let's remember, comedians talk about what's on fire. They aren't the arsonists. We get a break from this shithole country at comedy shows. Be angry at the people in our neighborhoods who fall for the same bullshit every election and re-elect so many of these brain poison bastards. Thank you, Kevin. This is from Leah. I can't... Got it. This is Leah Brendan Brett. Well, that's... That, you're Leah? Oh, she's there. That was not Leah's voice. Because that would freak out some of the people I was reading about. That would be a he, she, they combo pack. Uh, Linda, I really enjoy, Leah, I'm sorry, Leah. Uh, how do you pronounce your last name? Well, I wouldn't know. I would have been here for a week. It's, it, but it does sound like an excellent spice. Riedenbrecht. Or a bread I should have made during the pandemic. A guy who, <laughs> a guy who called me fat when he broke up with me walked in front of my car the other day, and I decided not to step on the gas. <laughs> Which is a decision I regret. <laughs> I'm gonna end with this really long, but well worth it, um, a piece that I think you'll, you'll enjoy immensely, written by one of your own. Um, it, 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 it's, it's written from someone called Scared Shitless. Uh, <laughs> Lewis, I, I think I work in an alternate universe. I'm a recent college graduate and have had two interim jobs since my virtual graduation. The first seemed promising at first, but ended up being a part of a creepy sex cult. <laughs> that story deserves its own rant, so stay tuned. Part of the reason I wanted to read this um, was I've been getting a few things recently where he's going, well, you're saving the creepy sex cult story? <laughs> Fuck! And I've had like three of these recently where they go, well, then there was the, the, uh, the, the there was one that I just got and I'll, I'll be reading it in a while. It was somebody, uh, it was, a, 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 it was a, from a pilot uh, who was riding him, you know, on, the, on one of those hop over planes so he can get to a, a flight. And, he's, and he saw a, uh, you know, a, a monkey, you know, one of those, uh, you know, that you got to, to take care of. What do they call those fucking, the ones that they carry around with them that supposed to make you feel better? You have a chimp. But, yeah, whatever the fuck they called it, you know, surrogate son, whatever. But, but I mean, I get it. But it's a monkey, and the monkey was it was it was jacking off on somebody. And he said, "That's the story I'll save for another." T Tell me that story! God damn it! Now I'm going to read the other story. But thank you, Scared Shitless actually went on to have a good, it, it goes well, it's well worth it. But whew, 
God, I can't wait to hear about the creepy sex cult. Uh, the second of which is an office job. That's the story he's going to tell in a factory. factory. Riveting, right? Uh, I, now, I almost stopped reading at that point. I entered the position expecting to work there for a year or so to save up some money, pay off some student loans, and find a bigger city to move to. What I ended up with are the strangest group of fuckwads on the planet as my co-workers. I assure you, your workplace and co-workers will seem like angels frolicking through rainbow fields after hearing what I deal with. To set the scene, the computer software I mainly use is from 1989. The Simpsons first aired in 1989. The Berlin Wall caught a glimpse of this software and even said, Auf Wiedersehen, fuckers. <laughs> also, there are not one but two guillotines within the facility. <laughs> and don't even think about asking what they're used for. One of my co-worker's sons dated a famous Instagram influencer whose average annual income is around $5 million. Another guy is missing a leg. When it's a slow day at work, he often drives around on an electric scooter playing the world's longest game of hide and seek with his hiding leg. <laughs> That's why I do this. One guy recently brought a specked out Tesla but doesn't believe it's any more efficient than his wife's Hummer or the climate change exists. This is also the grown ass man that applies Mountain Dew flavored chapstick because it tastes good. <laughs> One lady is missing her teeth while another quit her job because she just had too much on her plate. The only thing on that fucking plate of hers is a pile of desserts as tall as Mount Everest. The real reason she quit was that she couldn't roll out of bed without ricocheting her portly, triple chin, floppy fucking ass off her similarly obese dog who lies next to her. <laughs> Another guy flies to Africa to hunt endangered species so he can hang him on his do you love me now, dad wall at home. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. I don't care how bad you felt before you came in here. One lady is the office fitter Flipper, flipper to give it, who will get to know you so she can bitch till the cows come home about your co-workers. As soon as she's spoken her mind to you, she'll meander to the neighboring office and proceed to proclaim to not only your co-workers, who you both literally just finished shit-talking, but to God himself, how simply atrocious you are to think such negative and condescending thoughts about your co-workers. She's, this is, this is so spectacular. What I'm gonna to read to you is one of the most spectacular insanities I've ever been witness to. She's so desperate to bitch at someone that she goes to the nearby cemetery, finds a random person's tombstone, and proceeds to berate their character flaws <laughs> that she's just now making up based on their name. I shit you not, I can't make this up! One believes that COVID-19 vaccine contains a microchip, while simultaneously believing that his chewing tobacco whitens his teeth and promotes gum health. <laughs> he also believes that wearing a mask is only for preventing you from spreading your germs with others and doesn't think that it also protects you from inhaling other people's germs. I'm sure I'd spew the same shit breath message if my mouth were de decomposing too. The guy's son believes that Kyle Rittenhouse is just Wisconsin's friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. <laughs> With this logic, Senator Joe McCarthy must be our Mr. Rogers then. <laughs> I was taught that McCarthy was referring to communists when talking about the Red Scare. Thinking about it now though, he was clearly talking about Bucky the Badger in his red sweater. <laughs> Hindsight is 2020 after all. Now, I rant all of this to you today, not just to display my traveling crackhead circus show co-workers, although it is a nice perk, but to offer a message I needed to hear a while back and never did. While I'm aware and acknowledge that I make my own decisions and am responsible for them, these past two years have made me feel like an extra in a movie starring someone else. I felt like I've been dragged kicking and screaming through a storyline that I have no control over. 
I know I'm not the only one who feels like they've had to make some tough decisions that set them back a bit in order to just scrape by. I'm writing all of this to tell those of you out there who feel this way to make the changes in your life that will give you the life that you desire and deserve. Well, this may not be something you can do immediately because of financial, familial, or other circumstances. Keep moving toward your goals, even when the odds are stacked against you. These past couple of years have set everyone back in one way or another, but don't let that push your aspirations aside. We all deserve to live happy and prosperous lives. I made the mistake of following the plot of someone else's story for too long and somehow ended up in a sex cult. You better fucking tell me about it! <laughs> and my batshit crazy co-workers. Robert Sharma once said that getting lost on your path is part of finding the path you're meant to be on. As cheesy as this may sound, find the path that you're meant to be on and follow it all the way. Yep, well said. Not sure I would have gotten that in Des Moines. <laughs> I certainly would have gotten the co-workers part. It's a new year and I'm back out on the road and there are things to do. I personally don't want to spend my valuable time in line in a grocery store or hunched over a stove. I mean, to be honest, I don't even like to cook. But with Factor, people with busy schedules like me don't have to meal plan or prep. Factor makes it easy to eat healthy all day, every day with fresh, never frozen, prepared meals that are so delicious you wouldn't believe they're actually good for you. Factor saves time by delivering chef-crafted meals to your doorstep, eliminating the hassle of grocery shopping and meal prep. And afterward, clean up, no dishes to wash. <laughs> Each Factor meal arrives pre-prepared and ready to eat in two minutes faster than ordering in. They take the hard part out of meal preparation. Their registered dietitians and expert chefs work together to create delicious meals with nutritious ingredients, offering more than 27 meal options each week so selection can't be beat and you'll never be bored. Factor also customizes for your diet. They offer vegetarian and vegan meals and things like cold-pressed juices, smoothies, energy bites, plant-based bars, extra protein, veggie sides, and more. All you need to keep your energy through the day. It's healthy eating made easy. Factor is offering huge savings to Rantcast listeners who use the promo code LEWIS120 at checkout. Just visit go.factor75.com slash plans and use the code LEWIS120 at checkout to receive $120 off your first five weeks of meal plans. Once again, go.factor75.com slash plans and use the code LEWIS120 at checkout. We're coming to you from the showroom at the Mystic Lake Casino, and uh, we're in uh, just outside of Minneapolis, and it is, it, it is a city that I've... Uh, uh, had the joy of performing in a, a number of times, and uh, uh, yeah, I've, I've worked at the Acme Comedy Club for years. And, uh, and it really is one of the, the great comedy rooms uh, that we, uh, that you, when, you, when I was breaking in and, and going from city to city, it was one of the, the great rooms to play. And uh, so it's always good to be back, and, um, and I thank you all for coming out tonight. And thank you for what you wrote. We'll get right to it because we got a lot of stuff. Um, there is, uh, this is from Bella Wood. I live in probably the second crappiest town in Minnesota. <laughs> North Branch. <laughs> uh, all schools around us make fun of my school system because it's both poorly managed and filled with assholes. <laughs> we spent a million dollars to update the school. They needed uh, to cut, cut. They needed. Uh, uh, they needed to cut out teachers and art classes and fix up the football field that didn't need fixing. 
The school system is so shitty that I had to move schools a couple of times to get away from bullying. The town also sucks. There's public bathrooms in the park, and people just trash the bathrooms all the time. No one does ja jack shit. North Branch sucks. <laughs> this, I, I don't quite understand. This is from Andrew Whitney. I've been a Fuck You member for years now. Fuck You is my fan club. And it's, um, and what it allows is, is that it's a way in which that we figured out how to beat um, uh, the scalpers so that people join the fan club and they get access to a whole bunch of stuff that, uh, uh, that I keep hidden away from prying eyes and that uh, they have access to a ton of material that I've done and, uh, and they also mainly, more importantly, have access to really good seats and, uh, and, and, deal, and deal with human beings and it says, the first time buying fuck you tickets and I get second row center? It, and that bothered you? <laughs> Just give me the finger, okay. <laughs> and fuck you, okay, fuck you, Andrew. <laughs> and then you said broke my heart. How drunk are you? <laughs> you got second row center and you're upset about this? What, did you want to sit on the stage with me? No, I do mind. <laughs> this one, no. No, and that's enough, Andrew. <laughs> Fuck you twice. <laughs> this is from Dan Rosine. He's in, there in the audience. Hi, Louis. My wife and I run a foster care home for adults with disabilities. That's very good. And, yep. That's... That's all you're gonna get, Dan. The rest of them, it's fuck you. <laughs> fuck you and your, your fucking foster care home, son of a bitch. The, the rest of them, they already had low self-esteem. Now you made them feel worse. I'm doing nothing for my fellow man. Look at what you're doing, look at me. But that was pretty good as you were here tonight. You've heard how much they applaud nothing, so. Um, <laughs> So they, they work with, in addition, both of us have depression and I'm a type one diabetic, holy God. Every fucking day we get mail about health care. It's all we can think about. It's a nightmare trying to make sure the people in our care can get medical treatment they need. When the, when the fuck will people remember that beloved phrase, all men are created equal, and at least give people with medical conditions a fucking chance? If getting cancer can wipe out the life savings of a person who did everything right and saved every spare penny, what fucking chance do the rest of us have? How many people do any of us know that could pay for that shit? It's almost like for-profit health care creates profits instead of health care. You're absolutely right. It's because, you know, everybody, you know, it's like, of course we're going to pay for health care because what stands between us and death? Health care! <laughs> Sons of, it's unbelievable. I just, uh, I, can't, I can't even, I, I can't, I, 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 I would, if I get started, I might, I might die on stage. <laughs> Are you a big Olympic curling fan? No. It's like saying, oh, would you like to go to Florida and watch senior citizens play shuffleboard? No. No. I, I, Kirk Walton? Seriously, the Super Bowl is on a Sunday, and we all have to go to work the next day. This is very good, Kirk. This is very important. It is. Meanwhile, President's Day is one fucking week later. Why can't we move President's Day to the day after the Super Bowl? Washington and Lincoln are dead. They won't mind. What's more American than being hung over the day after the Super Bowl? You asked me to rant about this. There's no reason to rant. You nailed it. <laughs> you said it. You pointed it out. It absolutely should be. But we're dealing with the NFL, who what? Uh, <laughs> fucking assholes. 
Then we do the thing, they play the game, and then we wait two weeks. What the fuck, you? There's no reason to wait two weeks either, so that we can listen to everybody talk over, fuck, over, fuck, over, fuck, over, fuck, over again. How have you, where do you, where do you put your toenail clippings? I don't give a shit. Hi, Lewis, as a fan of the team, what do you think of the new Washington football team name, the Commanders? What do you think I think? <laughs> the fuck, God, what, how, huh? <laughs> what kind of a name, not even one, not a modicum of imagination, a modicum. You got the Vikings, at least that applies to fucking something. The Commanders, they did call, somebody called them the Commies, that would have been good. <laughs> They had a helmet with Stalin on the side. Okay, I'm in. <laughs> they had, we had a, basically we had a, a, a nickname of a subjugated people and now we pick commanders, which is the subjugator. What the fuck's the matter with us? <laughs> God damn it. I, don't, I have no idea that was like a hearing test. You're a fan of the Washington? That's Kirk Cousins. Yeah, congrats. Thanks for taking him. Seriously. Thank you. Thank you. He's yours. I watch just to feel good. That's how sad it is to be a Washington fan. This is from Kevin Krenz. I went to the bath, the restroom just before your show here at Mystic Lake. As I was waiting to take a piss, the guy in front of me was pissing in on his phone at the same time. Jesus fucking Christ! I have to wait for this guy to check his Facebook before I can drain the lizard? I was hoping he'd piss himself, but no such luck. <laughs> this comes from Todd. I'm only reading part of it, Todd. You, you did it, you, he rewrote it four times, I give you credit for that. And, uh, but he, this is, um, this is why I'm not reading the whole thing, Todd. He says, uh, I'm, I'm not ranting about the occasional mile high club sex rendezvous that I've noticed in an AF lavatory, or the 50-50 chance that a passenger has been handcuffed and arrested at the spirit gate, or even, the service monkey jerking off in first class on his handicapped owner's shoulder. Yes, I said service monkey jerking off. Todd goes on to say a story for another time. Okay, once you said a service monkey jerking off on the handicapped owner's shoulder, Todd, I stopped reading. I said, nothing you're gonna tell me is gonna top that, and I need to know that story. Send me that story, I will read that story. Nothing tops that story. Not even, and maybe you can't even top the story with the story, because that fucking, wow. I didn't know you could even have a service fuck monkey. And once it jerked off, didn't they have somebody at fucking the gate going, okay, we could, we could confiscate the monkey. <laughs> this is, and I'm gonna end with this because uh, Valentine's Day is coming. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Isn't that great, huh? You don't, you follow the Super Bowl with Valentine's Day, but you're fucked. And this is uh, from Amanda St. George. I'm gonna skip this, the first part, and just go right to the heart of this. My beef is with fucking Valentine's Day. This holiday is the worst. As a kid, we were expected to bring little notes and treats for our friends and or crushes, which either turned into another episode of everyone gets a trophy, so no one feels left out, or an exercise in awkwardness and hurt feelings. Never mind my added confusion of being a budding lesbian in a Catholic school. 
Honestly, what's a gal to do when you're surrounded by uniform skirts, hormones, and the internalization of religious guilt? But I suppose it was just training for the indignities of being a working adult in modern America, where everyone on the team gets the same recognition, regardless of contribution, or where a choice assignment leaves someone else but hurt. Or where navigating a dating app requires the frequent use of a search engine to figure out what someone's kink or romantic preference is. Oh, you're a sapiosexual. <laughs> if you haven't had the pleasure of having to Google all the latest and greatest terms out there, sapiosexual means attracted to intelligence. Come on. Forgive me when I roll my eyes out loud. It doesn't matter what you put on your profile, you could write, idiots need not apply. The idiots will not be deterred. I loathe Valentine's Day for the obvious reasons, like the fact that it's a corporate money-making scam or being single, the reminder that one day my cats will likely eat my face when I stroke out. And they run out of non-human-based food. But what really gets me about Valentine's Day is that it's only a couple of days before my birthday, which can make celebrating a miserable pain in the ass. I'm a procrastinator and like to do things last minute, but oh no, not when your birthday weekend is also Valentine's Day fucking weekend. Restaurants are booked, shows are booked, my friends with partners all have plans, and all the goddamn cakes and cookies in the bakery are pink and heart-shaped. This would be such a problem if I didn't seem to have such an aversion to pink, probably brought on by being saturated of it, by, saturated by it as a child and its heavily gendered connotations. Sometimes a girl isn't looking to feel girly on her birthday. Sometimes she wants to paint her face into a skull, wear a black robe and strike fear into her enemies while she celebrates one more trip around the sun without actually murdering them. God, I wish I'd been born around Halloween. It's just, anyway, thank you, Lewis, for bringing your show to a frozen, the frozen tundra of Minnesota this weekend. My single gay ass booked a ticket very last minute, and I'm happily sitting in the audience enjoying your show, dateless, because fuck Valentine's Day, and fuck having a date to go out and have a good time. And thank you, Amanda St. George. Thank you all for writing in tonight. I thank everyone who got, who sent me something. It's deeply appreciated. And thank you all for tuning in from around the world. I, I couldn't be happier. It's been a pleasure spending time with you in Minneapolis. Take care of each other. Good night. Thanks to all of you for listening to my rant cast. If you have a rant you want to get off your chest, send it in to me at lewisblack.com forward slash live. You can think of it as therapy or whatever you want to think of it as. Just let it rip. And I want to thank the true stars of our show the ranters, and the splendid rants they gave us. Lewis Black's Rantcast was created and hosted by me. Ha <laughs> Lewis Black. It is produced by James Salkind. Our theme song by Chris Lane. Executive producer, Ben Brewer. Executive producers, Matt Kleinschmidt and Robert Kelly for the Laugh Button Podcast. And most of all, thank you, all of you who ranted so well on this show.